Guys, you are most welcome again. And today's topic is Renaissance again. And uh, in Renaissance period, we will be talking about uh, the works by Spencer. Okay, like the Shefford calendar, we will be talking about. We will be talking about the Spencerian stanza, what it is, and sonnets by by Spencer, and some other poems like he has written Prosthelamian and the fairy queen his epic poem some short poems he has written so we will be talking about them we will have a look on them and astrophil and st uh, only st uh, astrophil we will be talking about here and after his death some poems got published so we will be making our notes of them prosalemian and we can uh, have some discussion over epithelamian okay and later we will be talking about amorathy this is a, a sonnet cycle by Edmund spencer and later his uh, about his life we can uh, talk about and then we will be talking about globe theater as uh, Shekhar commented yesterday and he requested to talk a little about Globe Theatre which is related to Shakespeare what is when it got uh, you know closed and who got it closed and opened when it opened rebuilt what is it its modern name we will be talking about so let's start by Globe Theatre first and uh, we can go ahead I take screenshots of uh, you know the live chats like yesterday you were uh, you know commenting so I I had uh, you know the screenshots so that so that I can make uh, I can take your request of the video so let's start today's topic so let's talk about globe theater first the so globe theater was uh, built in 1599 and they used the same timber which was used in the theater which had been uh, built by Richard Barbas's father James Barbas in uh, Shoreditch in 1576 now some important facts about uh, Globe Theater are in 1559 uh, it was uh, taking the wooden ore reference to be disparaging and thus unlikely to be used in Globe's inaugural staging. And here, some uh, Swiss tourist account tells that, okay, this is important, that the account of a performance of Julius Caesar witnessed on 21st, so, uh, 21st September 1599, okay. The first production so when uh, we say what was the first production in globe theater it can be julius caesar but the firm records of performance the first performance was the johnson's every man out of his humor so remember this uh, the first performance which which has a firm record it is of johnson's every man out of humor so i think johnson's every man out of his humor should be considered the the first performance in the globe theater and uh, which its first scene welcoming the gracious and kind spectators at the end of the year and here on uh, on june 29 1613 the globe theater went up in flames during the performance of henry eighth okay but uh, nobody get, got hurt but except a man whose burning breeches were put out to bottle of ale okay so 1613 we should remember and the performance was of henry eighth so you can uh, remember you can write down this next thing is a modern construction of the theater is named Shakespeare's Globe. So now it is uh, considered as Shakespeare's Globe. It is opened in 1997. 
विद अ प्रोडक्शन ऑफ हैंनरी फिफ्थ तो हमें कुछ फैक्ट पता चले दैट इट वॉज बिल्ट इन फिफ्टीन नाइनटी नाइन एंड लीटर नाउ इन मॉडर्न रिकन्स्ट्रक्शन इट्स नेम इज शेक्सपियर्स ग्लोब राइट एंड दैनरी फिफ्थ प्रोडक्शन वॉज देयर एंड हैंनरी एट्थ इट वॉज ड्यूरिंग हैंनरी एट्थ प्रोडक्शन वैन इट गॉट इन टू फ्लेम्स लाइक ऑल अदर थिएटर्स इन लंडन इन सिक्सटीन फोर्टी फोर्टी टू प्यूरिटन्स burned it down or sorry closed it down not burned it down but it was closed okay and it was pulled down in uh, 1644 45 the commonly cited document dated the act of 15 april 1644 has been identified as probable forgery to make room for tenements uh quick glimpses like it opened on 15 uh, in 1599 closed in 1642 and rebuilt in 1614 and if we say modern okay mo- modern construction it is in 1997 and named shakespeare's globe now we will be talking about edmund spenser he was uh, a be- english bo- best known for the fairy queen and it is an epic poem and uh, fantastically allegory celebrating the tudor dynasty and elizabeth first so remember at the uh, age of elizabeth first uh, it was the highest or peak time for renesa he is recognized as one of the premier craftsmen of nascent modern english verse and is often considered one of the greatest poet in the english language let's talk about his works spencer's masterpiece is the the epic poem the fairy queen the fairy queen the first three books of the fairy queen were published in 1590 and a second set of three books were published in 1596 so fairy queen uh, got published in 3 plus 3 books okay so you can uh, remember with this 15 90 and then 15 96 after 6 years spencer originally indicated that the intended the book he intended the poem to consist of 12 books so the version of the book we have today is incomplete okay so it is in- incomplete he planned to write down 12 books but he could complete only 6 and in the sets of 3 3 he got them published in 90 and 96 it is an allegorical work and he you know it was uh, written in praise of queen elizabeth elizabeth first it is a completely allegorical context the poem follows several knights in a in an examination of several virtues a letters the spencer's a letter of the authors he states that the entire poem is a cloudly enwrapped in allegorical devices and that the aim behind the fairy queen was to fashion a gentleman or noble person in virtuous and gentle discipline let's have a quick look on his works like in uh, 1591 he published complaints it was a collection of poems later he wrote amrathi nine sonnets okay it was uh, sorry it was 80 89 sonnets and in amrathi 89 sonnet collection and later he wrote apothelmian and similar to apothelmy mm, amrathi deals in parts with the unease in development of romantic and sexual relationship so this was this the you can say the idea of uh, writing amrathi next is the fairy queen later he wrote prosalamian let's talk about amrathi and uh, its details 
for our exams and we can make our notes. Amrithi is a sonnet cycle. It was written by Edmund Spencer in 16th century and uh, this cycle describes the courtship and eventual marriage to Elizabeth Boyle. So it was written for Elizabeth Boyle. Okay. Yeah, some uh, you can make the mind maps like this. Elizabeth Boyle for uh, okay, Amorthy for Elizabeth Boyle and in 16th century, it got first published in 1595 in london by william ponsubai he was his favorite publisher so you can uh, take the screenshot of this and later you can um, talk about these things all right you can remember with the help of this now let's talk about epithelium it is an ode so remember this again epithelamian is an ode and uh, it was it was written for his bride again Elizabeth Boyle on their wedding day it was in 1594 and got published after just one year later and again I, as I told you that his public uh, publisher was sponsored by as a part of whole uh, of a volume entitled Amorati and Epistalamian. Okay, so this is written not long since by Edmund Spencer. The volume included it has it had 89 sonnets. Again, Amorati along with a series of short poems called uh, Anacreonautics and the Epithelamian, a public poetic celebration of marriage. Only six complete copies of this first edition remain today. If you want to read, agar aapko padna hai, go to this place. Folger Shakespeare Library and one at the Bodleian, Bodleian Library. The ode begins with the invocation of the muses to help the groom and moves through the couple's wedding day from Spencer's impassioned hours before drawing dawn while waiting for his bride to wake up to the late hours of night after Spencer and Boyle have consummated their marriage. Okay, we have uh, talked about this. Spencer meticulously records the hour of the day from uh, from before dawn to late into a wedding night. Its 24 stanza represent the hours midsummer day. So you can remember this one. It had got 24 stanzas, and the, what they represent, they represent hours of midsummer day. The epithelium is also 365 long lines. So epithelium has uh, 365 lines corresponding to days in a year. So it can be asked in exams. So remember this one. Now let's talk about Prosalamian a little bit. Now uh, the commonly used name of Prosalamian or a spousal, it is also asked in exams, a spousal verse in honor of the double marriage of Lady Elizabeth and Lady Catherine Somerset. It got uh, published, you know, published for one of the important poets of the Tudor period Edmund Spencer, we know this fact. It got published in 1596. And it is a nuptial song that he composed that year on the occasion of the twin marriages of the daughters of Earl of uh, Worcester, Elizabeth Somerset, and Catherine Somerset. So you can remember these two plus Catherine Somerset. And Elizabeth Somerset to Henry Guildford and William Petrian, second Baron Petrie, respectively. Prosalamian is written in the conventional form of marriage song. So, again, it is a marriage song, conventional. The poem begins with the description of river Thames.
the he describes your river themes in this poem so you can make your uh, you know again mind maps like this so prosthelamian is a ma marriage song and he started it with the description of river themes it can be asked that uh, in description which which river is uh, you know uh, is described spencer finds two beautiful uh, maidens there uh, like this okay just showed you a picture river themes and praise them uh, the poet proceeds to praise them and wishing them all the blessings for their marriage the poem begins with a fine description of the day when on which he he is writing the poem next topic we can uh, cover the spencerian stanza and sonnet spencer used a distinctive verse form called the spencerian stanza in several works including the fairy queen he used and uh, the stanza's main meter is iambic pentameter if you don't know what iambic pentameter is you can check out my detailed video on this topic on my channel scroll down in the videos with a final line of iambic hexameter and finally and uh, uh, it is having six beats or stresses known as alexandrine okay iambic so nine line poem a uh, nine line stanza he has and the rhyme scheme is a b a b b c b c c so remember this one one alexandrine it has six feet okay and he used iambic pentameter iambic hexameter at the last he also used his own rhyme scheme for the sonnet in spencerian sonnet now later people call it spencerian sonnet the last line of every quatrain is linked with the first line of the next line to so remember this fact last line of every quatrain is linked with the first line of next next one yielding the rhyme scheme a b a b b c b c c d c d e e now next one is the shepherd calendar is edwin spencer's first major work it got published in 1579 and it emulates virgil's eclogue it is related to this one okay you can uh, remember in this way and later it was an eclogue is is a short pastoral poem okay the shepherd calendar is pastoral poem that in the form of dialogues and soliloquy he has written here he has uh, shown there are 12 months and uh, every month every single month is equal to a poem there okay it is about uh, 17th century so finally we have completed uh, most of the work we have talked about the basic description and uh, it is already to uh, nearly 20 minutes video i hope you enjoyed the this is uh, main thing if you want to make your uh, own mind maps go through the whole video take a pen and notebook make your mind maps because mind map helps you well in remembering facts in english literature english literature mein agar aap bahut sare facts yaad karna chahte hain to aapko mind map bahut help karenge and definitely aap apne exam mein jyada better kar payenge with the help of mind map it's a very it's a great technique for studying facts especially and remembering facts agar aapki bhi problem hai ki aapko bhi meri tarah year aur facts yaad nahi hote hain to aap mind map technique use kar sakte hain then you can uh, go through the works and you can remember them for a long long time so amrithi and prosthelamian spencerian stanza epithelamian fairy queen he uh, we talked about okay later yes here is one uh one more thing about in this video we can talk about you can make your notes because these are sometimes asked in uh, exams puche jate hain exams mein so these were his short poems okay so you can uh, write down the runes of time the tear tears of the muses virgil's net prosopopia or mother hubbard's tale mother hubbard's tale it was asked in kvs exam 
ruins of Rome, Rome by Bailey. So these are his short poems. Posthumously, some works got published, like in 1609, two cantos of uh, mutability published together with the reprint of the Fairy Queen. And 1611, first folio edition of Spencer's collected works came in, you know, existence. 1633, a view of the present state of Ireland, the prose treaty on the reformation of Ireland, first published in James Ware's Ancient Irish Chronicles, Spencer's work, was entered into the Stationers Register in 1598. Next, Prosalemian we talked about, and Prosalemian we have talked in detail. Okay, Epithalamian, Amorathi again and globe theater so you can write down these on your diary and i hope you enjoyed the video and please do come at 7 30 tomorrow in the case we will be choosing a new writer and you can write down in you know chat live chat or in comment box so that i will be taking notes and i will be making the video for you bye bye take care see you in next video